35 years ago, I sold all of my snow machines and swore on a stack of Bibles that I would never own one of these unreliable piles of crap ever again. Uh, but here I am and I decided to buy one again and I also got this trailer for it and this video is a review of this trailer primarily uh, because it actually is really nice. I, I really like it. This is a positive review. Those of you familiar with my reviews in general, because it's usually boat shit, um, they're usually negative. And I think of positive versus negative reviews sort of like road signs on a road. When the road is long and straight and everything is really nice, there are no road signs. And that's kind of like positive reviews. You don't really need to do a positive review of something that works out really well or at least you don't think about it. Uh, but when things are work out badly, uh, that's sort of like a really windy road. You have lots of road signs and all those road signs are reviews warning people about what's going to happen next. So that's what a negative review is. It's kind of a, uh, a road sign on a windy road to keep you from driving off the straight and true. Anyway, based on my general experience with boat shit, this trailer uh, was, was a refreshing surprise. Maybe refreshing is an understatement. I should call it a miraculous surprise because usually things go the other way. Anyway, this thing, it's really worked out pretty well. And you can see it's an aluminum trailer and it's also very low to the ground. That's because it has a torsion axle and uh, that means it doesn't have a real steep slope when you're driving up onto the, uh, onto the trailer. That is good because then you don't have to get as much speed and you don't have to worry so much about slamming into this uh, mud guard that's on the front of the uh, trailer. And this mud guard does a pretty good job of keeping everything off the machine. Uh, it can't be perfect just because there, you know, there's a lot of spray back here that's just kind of vaguely flying around. Uh, you know, so it, it's going to get some spray on it, you know, just like the back of the truck here, uh, the scursion. It's got crap all over it. Well, uh, that kind of means there's going to be crap all over the uh, snowmobile too. And when it's hooked up to the truck with a slight downslope like this, the back of the, uh, the trailer is 14 inches off the ground, the top of the back. And that's different from the truck which is 36 inches off the, off the uh, ground. So the whole thing is more pleasant and worry free when loading compared to using a ramp into the back of a truck. And so here's a list of modifications that I've made to the trailer so far. It did not have these holes uh, for the tie downs. So I drilled some holes for tie downs. Uh, the clamp, it looks pretty good. It's pretty solid. Uh, but one point of hold down is not enough. You need more than that. So all together I drilled uh, four holes. And then uh, when backing off the trailer, it turns out the, the ski would tend to catch on this lip here. So I just ground that down a little bit uh, to make that a little bit nicer. And then something I will have to do, I just noticed this, is uh, this fender's a little, little loose. It's bolt, the bolts are, whole, are, are tight, uh, so there's, uh, there's something going on there. I just need to, you know, either zap a weld on there or, you know, some, something like that. So that's it. Those are all the different, all, all the changes I've made to this trailer and I'm happy with it. Now this uh, little clampy thingy on the, uh, on the hold down bar, that's just a, uh, a threaded piece of aluminum. So my guess is eventually that will kind of strip out and so I carry a, a nut to put on that should that happen. And this hold down clamp is on this rail kebab. And there's a, this guy slides in this rail so you can put the clamp anywhere you want on the whole length of the trailer. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's actually really clever. And underneath on the front here you can see there's this uh, gas shock. And the purpose of this is to hold the trailer up in the tilted position when there is nothing on it. And so that's handy, you know, you just drive away and go snowmobiling for a couple hours, come back and your trailer's still tilted, you just drive right on. Easy. And this, uh, this, this gas thing is uh, um, insufficient to do anything when the snowmobile is on it. It's just for when, when the trailer is empty. And this little pin thing that holds the, uh, the, the trailer from tipping, yeah, it might be a little wimpy. I might have to come up with something a little bit different. Uh, 
it doesn't make, take much force at all to get that to pop up and off. So I might decide for a, a different kind of pin on that. Anyway, you pull this off and pull that pin out. And then it's basically a two finger lift. And the whole thing tilts very nicely. Well, that's as steep as it gets, which is not very darn steep, which is really nice. So uh, two finger lift is handy for an old man. And when pulling the trailer around, uh, because it's a tilt trailer and it's you know, pretty well balanced like this, uh, this jack is almost not needed. You know, uh, I, it might be 50 pounds to, to lift it, you know, 100 pounds max, probably 50 pounds to lift it and uh, move it around. So you almost need, don't need that jack. And the surface of the trailer is, uh, it's some kind of hard plastic glued down to uh, plywood. And you can see I've, I've driven onto it several times and it's not being scored by the skis. So it's pretty good. Anyway, this trailer is a good thing. I, I, I like it. Uh, the tri tires are, you know, they're standard provider trailer tires. Uh, the only thing left I really need to do is uh, get with the manufacturer and find out what grease they have in the axles because I want to make sure that I am using the same grease. If you use incompatible greases, then the thickeners in the grease can uh, so, sort of uh, blend together and then all the oil will just run out and you've just got a, basically a blob of clay inside of there and it's stupid. So anyway, you need to make sure that you have the correct grease when you're greasing something. If you don't know what the grease is, then you probably want to clean the grease out and start over with whatever you're going to use. Oh, and one more thing is, uh, overall the trailer is a lot heavier gauge than I thought it would be. You know, this, uh, this splash guard is obviously just sheet metal and the same with the fenders. Um, but for example, this uh, tongue on this, that's a three by three channel and it's about 5 16 uh, which is heavier than I expected. Uh, but overall, you know, the, I think the trailer weighs around 500 pounds. Um, and then uh, maybe 450. And you throw on, on the snowmobile for another 450, so you got about 900 pounds. You know, so the whole thing is pretty light. And that lightness is one of the reasons that you can have uh, virtually no tongue weight up here. For a trailer to start oscillating, uh, because the tongue weight is low, then it needs to weigh quite a bit relative to the towing vehicle. So you got 900 pounds here maybe, and then, you know, this thing weighs about 7,000. So it's really not going to get any feedback into the towing vehicle. So it'll tow nice and straight, even though there's uh, very little tongue weight. So that's a review of the trailer. And uh, the snow machine, you know, it's kind of old. It's a 2007, but it only had 500 miles on it. And the reason for that was because people were terrified of it, just like a lot of people are terrified of their boat. The reason they were terrified of it, because they pounded another one into a tree and then had to get life flighted out. And this was when they were just getting going on snowmobiles, so they lost interest. So this thing was a, is a 2007 with 500 miles. Does that sort of remind you of a lot of used boats? Where you see a 20 year old boat that has 50 hours on it? That doesn't happen for no reason. And this didn't happen for no reason either. But I should make it very clear that most people are not terrified of their boat because they wrecked it or pounded it into a tree. The primary reason they're terrified of their boat is because other people tell them they ought to be terrified. They're influenced by what these people say and so they're terrified. The next reason they're terrified is because, well, right after they buy their boat, whether new or used, something seriously goes wrong with the trailer. And so now they're terrified of their trailer. They don't know what's going to happen while they're just driving down the road. Now, the next th reason they're terrified is because right after they buy their boat, whether new or used, something seriously goes wrong mechanically with their boat. So now they're terrified of their boat just from a mechanical perspective. And they're wondering, oh God, I could have a breakdown while I'm on the river and then very bad things will happen. So they're terrified of their boat just mechanically. And the last reason, and maybe the least important reason that they're terrified, is because of the actual water and the river. You know, yeah, it's dangerous out there. Uh, to a certain extent, and there's lots of things you can do to mitigate that. But that's really the only reason they ought to be terrified. They shouldn't ought to be terrified because other people are telling them to be terrified. They shouldn't ought to be terrified because their, their trailer breaks down right away. And they shouldn't ought to be terrified because their boat is breaking down right away. 
None of those reasons need to exist. All that they really should be worrying about is the river itself and the rest of those terrors are just a shame.